Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley with another vlog update. I'm sorry I missed you on the vlog last week. I was actually out in Las Vegas at the NAB show doing some coverage out there and playing with the toys on the floor. But that just means I have a lot more good information to pack into this vlog, so hopefully you'll find something interesting. I'd like to start with the NAB show itself. If you've never been to Vegas before, everything in Vegas is big. So to go to a venue that could pack that many vendors and hundreds of vendors with all levels of technology was just an overwhelmingly cool experience. And I'm like a kid in a candy store when I get around technology. I had a bit of a scavenger hunt where I had 10 or 12 vendors that I really wanted to spend some time with and probably another 20 that I wanted to visit with. I got to most of them and I got a few interviews done. You probably saw them posted on the channel around some cool technology that relates to our hobby of droning. I do have some more content that I'll be posting over the next couple of days, so stay tuned for that. I also badgered those guys pretty hard to send me the test equipment that I could actually do reviews of. So hopefully the guys from Epson with the Movario goggles, the PowerVision guys with the PowerRay product, and a few other the vendors I talked to, the guys from Dobby, um, to send me some gear to actually go over. So if I get those, I'll do a full Drone Valley review and all that gear. Now there are other companies that I'm working with as well that I think are kind of on the leading edge of some of the technology we should pay attention to, one of them being DJI. Now I did talk about the DJI goggles. I've got a bunch more clips coming this week about their Sendence remote and their Tractenna and some of the other stuff with the Ronin too. I know that may not be in your wheelhouse as far as a purchase goes, but like I always say, a lot of that technology on the high end really is where they develop a lot of the key features that make their way down to the consumer level drones. So it's important we pay attention to that stuff just so we can kind of predict what's coming for our little world. All right, so enough about the NAB show. Fantastic event, by the way. I will be attending the Ascend event, which I think is somewhere in the middle of the summer, and then there's an inner drone event that's coming up in September. Let me know if you guys think that those clips are worthwhile, because it is a lot of work to do them. I love talking to those vendors, but if you're finding value in those interview clips, I'll do more of those, because I really had a good time there and enjoyed doing those clips. All right, so the next couple of things I want to talk about all have to do with of advancements that have taken place kind of behind the scenes over the last two weeks and they have to do with drone safety and regulations. You guys know I'm a big proponent of being able to fly my drone safely anywhere I want to fly it. I'm a strong supporter of the fact that if the FAA tells me I can fly, I should be able to fly. I'm not a fan of local drone bans and little municipalities getting involved in where and when you can fly your drone. And I think the only way that's going to change is if at a national level safety standards are established and preventative things that make the drone safer or incorporate it with a lot of the drones. And I've talked before about some technologies that'll help with that, like the EDS-B technology or the ADS technology for auto uh, collision detection, those type of things. This week, a couple of things happened that helped us move forward a little bit with the hobby. And they, again, we're kind of behind the scenes. The first one has to do with a testing center called ASSURE, A-S-S-U-R-E, which stands for Alliance for system safety of UAS through research excellence. I had to read it because it's so long. I, I think in that case, they came up with the acronym first and then stuck up a bunch of words together to make sense of it. But in essence, they're the testing arm for the FAA. So the FAA contracts with them to do safety testing. And the report they put out this week, which is extremely comprehensive, had to do with what exactly happens if a drone falls out of the sky and hits you on the head? Because that's the thing everybody points to. Well, if you're flying a drone, it could fall out of the sky and hit somebody. Now, honestly, if you're flying it legitimately, you won't be flying over people anyway, because the FAA prevents that, or it should say the legislation or regulations they put out prohibits you from flying over people unless they're agreeing to be in the video or they're people that you're working with. But if you're gonna be a Yahoo and fly over people and the drone does fall down, it would be interesting to know how much damage that can cause. So they spent an awful lot of time looking at existing research from crash test dummies with cars and other toy things that have been tested. And lo and behold, they came out with a report that said, a drone falling out of the sky is less dangerous and damaging to somebody on the ground than other objects would be like wood and steel or, or metal. And I know that isn't really that reassuring because it's not like a plank is going to fall out of the sky and hit somebody on the head, but that research points to drones because of their elasticity and because the way the the propellers maybe counter rotate when the thing's coming down, it not only slows the descent of the quad, but during the point of impact, when that quad does impact somebody's body, there's an elasticity to it that absorbs a lot of that shock. So it's not transferring all of the weight and impact and kinetic energy of that falling from the sky into the person. Now, it's a small victory, but that report does back up the fact that even if a quad, God forbid, fell out of the sky and hit you on the head, it would be less impactful than other objects falling out of the sky. So that's a positive step forward for us. I know it's not a big deal, but that's the first step into the FAA looking at allowing 
beyond visual light, line of sight flights to take place over people. Because you know Amazon and a lot of the commercial vendors are looking to put autonomous drones up to bring a package to your front lawn. These kind of studies help them justify the fact that they can actually fly that drone now and not have to worry about it crashing on somebody's head. So that's the first step. The other thing that was kind of buried in there was the intent of the FAA to look at beyond visual line of sight flights. Now I've talked about this for quite some time and it's one of the reasons I argue that if you're serious about the hobby and you really love flying, you ought to go get your part 107 test pass because I feel like there's a, a point coming, a point of inflection coming where they're gonna start relaxing the rules on things like visual line of sight um, and, other, and other things that are going on, maybe restrictions around airports and things like that for certified pilots. And I, I don't wanna sound like there's gonna be two class of flyers, hobbyists, and part 107s, but I think if they're gonna introduce this relaxation in the rules, it'll happen with the part 107 pilots first. But back to my original point, the fact that the FAA is looking at beyond visual line of sight flights, um, and this study helps to bolster, that's a really good thing for us. So the, the other thing that happened this week was the FAA published finally an interactive map of UAS facilities. Now, what that map will do is if you have your Part 107 and you have to fly within restricted zones, maybe around airports or things like that, um, this map allows you to very quickly put through, based on the map, an exemption with the FAA. So you can file for an exemption based on the map and it's supposed to streamline the process. So for people that are Part 107, this is a really big deal. But if you're not a Part 107 flyer and you just want to put up a drone and fly, that map is really informative too to let you know exactly what you're flying near. So you can look at that map, you can zero in and exactly where you're gonna put your quad up, and you'll see areas that are restricted, where you can't fly, areas that are sort of regulated, where you have to be careful when you fly. It just gives you a real good feel for how many things are around you that you should be aware of when you're putting a drone up. Um, so I like the fact that it's interactive, because that way if I travel, you know, in the tri-state area to Pennsylvania, New York, Delaware, wherever I happen to want to fly, before I go there, I can bring up this map, put in the exact coordinates where I'm going to land or fly, and I can see exactly what the restrictions are around me. So, very cool. And again, I put links below for all these things. So there'll be links below for the Assure report, there'll be links below for this interactive map, um, and you can look it up yourself and you can play with it. But I think the more tools that are out there to make us smarter flyers and safer flyers, the less restrictions they'll be implemented. I think the government, I should say the local governments all realize that we are taking this seriously and we're trying to police ourselves. All right, so enough about that. The next thing I want to talk about, and this happened kind of behind the scenes, and it goes to the intelligence of how smart these quads are getting. Um, I read recently that DJI just, again, quietly through one of their firmware updates, implemented no-fly zones that reflect Afghanistan and Iraq and, and ISIS and things like that because there have been reports of some of these terrorist groups getting a hold of quads that are inexpensive at this point and using them as sort of flying IADs to take some of the troops out and cause problems for the troops over there. And I can imagine if you're in that war zone and you see a phantom coming up over the wall, it's hard for them to throw a grenade over the wall, but if they can put a drone up and fly it three miles away, you don't even know where the bad guy is at that point. So the fact that the government and DJI in particular are working together to put these geofences up very quickly and very effectively that says if those knuckleheads put up a drone and try to come over this area where our troops are, it stops at that border. They can't get past that border. And that's not something they can hack. So for me, again, as a big a supporter I am as the troops and, and I want those guys to be safe, the fact that the technology can react that quickly to those kind of scary things is just amazing to me. So, you know, good on you DJI for doing that. And I think as drones become much more sophisticated, like the DJI products, a lot of the drone companies will be able to do that and implement those kind of no-fly rules. So the next thing I want to talk about is uh, the beyond visual line of sight. Let me finish that conversation. So this next point has to do with testing. Now, it's just been approved this week, uh, last week actually, that the FAA has approved one test site uh, the Northern Plains UAS test site for beyond visual line of sight testing. And it's in North Dakota, it's a North Dakota facility, but it's perfect because they've got their own test facility, there's an FAA facility there, so together those two guys can work on testing that beyond visual line of sight. Now I think what will probably happen, just my opinion, is if the FAA does relax that beyond visual line of sight requirement, or that visual line of sight requirement, they'll do it in stages. So it'll probably be certain styles of drones that have any collision technology on them, so maybe the Phantom 4 Pro that's got that four-sided collision detection. They may mandate that an ADS chip be in there so that the drone operator knows that there are aircraft in the area. It may actually require advanced technology that isn't out yet to do that, but I love the fact that they're, the FAA, again, I'm a fan of that group, even though you know we kind of hate them because they put these regulations in place, we like them because they're not being um, dictatorship about it. They're not just saying, look, we're the federal authority, we're going to tell you where you fly. They're flexible and they're constantly interacting with 
hobby groups and the drone community to say, look, we're thinking of doing this, we can relax this part of it if this kind of technology is implemented. So I love that kind of give and take. I think that that's a very, very healthy place to be because this whole drone environment is maturing almost weekly and changes are taking place. And the fact that they're that flexible and willing to work with the drone community is a good thing. So this initial stage of the beyond visual line of sight testing has to do with what does a drone need to be safe when it flies out of your line of sight. What kind of awareness technology should be in the drone? Um, can you use goggles to fly that? You'd have to use goggles because you want to see first person view or at least some type of uh, tablet in your, in your controller. But I like the fact that they're moving towards that kind of regulation relaxing because again, all of us love to fly. The fact that a drone can fly 4.3 miles, I've said before, I'm an older guy, I can't see more than a couple thousand feet. Maybe you younger guys can see it two miles out, but there's no way you're seeing it four miles out. So the fact that they can fly that far means that the technology's ready. It's just a matter of relaxing the rules enough for people to be responsible at how, how they fly out that far. So we'll kind of see how that matures. But I like the fact that they've put this facility together and they're starting that testing, which is, I think, all upside for us. So between the safety improvements that have taken place, the report that just came out, and the next report that Assure is working on, it, which has to do with beyond visual line of sight impact, I think is all positive stuff. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about is, I've mentioned in a previous vlog that every couple of vlogs I do, I'm going to give away something because I review a lot of equipment. I can't use all the equipment I have, and honestly, I don't feel right taking equipment from vendors to test for you guys and then just keeping it, right? It doesn't seem fair for me to do that. So I've, I've done one giveaway already. We had the Deladlo goggles a couple of vlogs back. We gave those away. Gentleman got them. He loves them. Um, the next product I want to give away, and I have a big deal sign over here. You can see I'm, I spent a little time making the sign up to make this a little less hokey than the last one, but I'll still do that uh, amazing reveal, is this V Walker stabilized gimbal. Now, I did a review of this thing a couple weeks ago, and what this product does is allows you to take your cell phone, mount it into the stabilized gimbal, and then use it like you would an Osmo Mobile. What's different about this one than some of the other stabilized gimbals out there is that it also has an attachment cable where you can separate the stabilized gimbal from the handle so you can put the, the gimbal on a tripod and be back away three or four feet and control it from a distance. So really cool product. I liked it an awful lot. I did a review on it. I'll probably put a link down below where you can go to that review. But at any rate, um, there'll be a link down below. It's not going to be as complicated last time. Last time I did the test, the uh, the giveaway through the Gleam site and it was complicated. You had to subscribe, you had to do this and you had to do that. All I'm going to ask for with these entries is basically to hit the link below. It'll take you to our website. Just put your email address in there. I promise you I'll get rid of all the email addresses when we're done, but I'll collect up all those email addresses over the next week or so and then, uh, you know, I'll pull one randomly out of it and we'll send this off to you. You know, if you subscribe to the channel, that's not going to help your chances any, but I would like for you to subscribe to the channel because I found out after talking to these vendors out in Las Vegas, they really look at those numbers. Now, I was never really big on saying, hey, I need to get a lot of subscribers. I'm just happy to make the clips and have you guys watch them. But it turns out the more subscribers you have, the bigger deal you are to those vendors. So if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel and you're regularly watching the content, just do me a favor and hit the subscribe button. If we can get these numbers up higher, I'll have a little bit more clout with them when I say to them, hey, I'd like you to send me one of those to test it so my viewers can get a look at it. So that's all I'll say about that. Then the last thing I want to mention is I did talk a couple of vlogs ago about a support site called Patreon. I set that up a couple of weeks ago and again, I only want to make you aware of it because I feel like I set that site up because there's a lot of you that are hardcore fans of the site and they want to get a hold of me directly and they want to have conversations on a regular basis. So with the Patreon site, we're going to set up uh, a weekly Q&A. So if you're, if you're supporting us on that site, you can send me questions through that email address over there. And then what I'll do once a week is sit down and answer those questions directly. So if there's something you're struggling with or something you need more information on or there's a product you want me to research for you, you'll be able to submit those questions and once a week or once every two weeks, I'll sit down and do a Q&A. I'm also thinking of doing a live sort of hang out over there with the Patreon group. So if you're part of that group, maybe once a month, I'll put together a 30 or 45 minute call where you can dial in and we can talk about things, we can talk about technology, you can ask me questions. So if any of that appeals to you, hit the link below, it's down, down the bottom, throw a couple of bucks, a bucket would get you in the group just to get that sort of started over there. That would help an awful lot because that allows me to fund trips to Las Vegas and I got to go back out in the middle of the summer and that way I'm not digging too deep in the pocket to support the hobby. So that's the last pitch I'll give you about that today. And that's really all I had today. So I want to thank you guys again for watching these vlogs. The numbers have been very, very strong. Subscribers are going up left and right where there's some birds flying through. Um, I'm, I'm having a great time doing these and I, I really am enjoying the interaction with you guys and checking out the new technology. So uh, thanks an awful lot for watching. If there's things I need to answer, I'm doing my best to stay on top of the questions and all the things you put down in the comments. Sometimes it's impossible to keep up with all of them, but shoot me an email if it's something really important and I'll get back to you 
really quickly. But that's it for today. Uh, and again, thanks an awful lot for watching. I hope you're enjoying these clips. And uh, as I always say, happy flying.